Hola Seekers and bienvenidos to a Pick a Card with me, Kim. So in this reading, we will find out what your next relationship will be. Now I have already done the readings, so please keep in mind that this reading is not exclusive to romantic relationships. They can be platonic as well as work or creative partnerships. But if they are romantic or they have the potential to become a romantic relationship, do not worry, you will be let known. Now, before I get more into how this reading will work out, I would like to give you a sneak peek on my next video in which you will be receiving an energy checkup through a pick a card reading format as well as some Reiki healing. So if you're interested and you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, then hit the subscribe button so you can get an instant notification when the video is finally up. Okay, so back to this reading. To get more information about this relationship, we will find out who this person is, what this relationship will be like, and why this relationship came to be. And of course, we will be using El Tarot and Oracle cards, as always, but you will also be receiving an intuitive message, and I will also be pulling out some keywords, as well as stars, that have letters, numbers, and astrological signs on them, just to get a little more detailed information about this person. Okay, so we have three groups to choose from. So for group one, we have the green adventuring. It's a little bit dirty, sorry. And for group two, we have the rose quartz. And lastly, for group three, we have the peach agate. Okay, so as always, please do pause the video if you need to, take as much time as necessary, and whatever crystal here calls out to you, then that will be a group. And the timestamp for each group is provided in the comment section down below. Okay, so now that you've chosen, let's jump into your reading. Let's go! Hola Seekers who chose the Green Adventuring. So as I connected with the energy of this group, I did receive two visuals. The first one being of two energies intertwining and then merging with one another. And the second one was of a house near the sea. Now I do keep getting this message of building on a relationship. And I do have this strong feeling that this will be a long lasting or long term relationship that will only strengthen over time. So this is of two people partnering up to work in harmony on this third entity that is the relationship itself. So I'm seeing you growing together. And I am picking up on the energies of compassion, understanding, and patience coming from both of you towards one another. And it is these energies that allow for this relationship to strengthen as time goes by and end result gives you both space to grow as individuals and souls within this relationship. Now I am getting this energy of build up emotions. So this might be you or this other person that tends to suppress their feelings because they do not know yet how to express them. And I feel like this will be something that will be worked on within this relationship. Okay, so now we will move into the cards. Also, we have the color green here that I associate with the heart chakra. So I feel like this is a very heart-centered connection, which explains the energies we picked up on of compassion, understanding, and patience. Um, so the first cards I will be showing you guys is to let us know a little more about this person that you will be connecting with, to get to know their energies, their personalities, as well as what is something that they have currently gone through or are going through that explains their current energy or the way that they're showing up when you meet them. So this is to get better insight into them. Okay, so we have the pelican in reverse. And we have the Ten of Wands, number 35, the Tower. Okay. So firstly, the Ten of Wands talks about having a lot on your plate, facing major challenges, being burnt out. But this is also a mentality of needing to keep going, needing to keep pushing through. Now we do have the Tower card here as well. And this often represents unexpected changes, revelations as well as upheavals and chaos. Now, I'm not saying that this is representing their energy. This is representing what they have gone through or are currently going through. Now, we do have the pelican in reverse, and the pelican upright denotes optimism. It is a very joyful energy. 
Now we do have the colors green, blue, as well as a purple or indigo here. Now the color green, as I mentioned before, I associate with the heart space. So I am feeling that this person is very compassionate, very gentle. I'm getting this um, message of being soft-spoken as well. As I mentioned previously, this might actually be them. Um, they tend to bottle up their emotions because I do not feel them to be very confrontational individuals. They are more of the pacifist. Um, they want to keep the peace. They want to keep the order. And I feel that they tend to sacrifice themselves at time in order to keep that balance, which is why I feel we're getting this Ten of Wands energy. They might actually take a lot of responsibilities that really do not belong to them in order to keep the peace. And with this Tower card, I feel like they have faced many, many obstacles and challenges in their life, but they are not a quitter. And because of these obstacles, and challenges, even though they pushed through and they persevered, even though they never gave up, I feel what it has caused is this kind of upturn in regards to their positivity or being always optimistic. Because I feel that this person tends to wait for the worst or with when things are going good for them, they are waiting for, I was just going to say a curse word, but they are waiting for, you know, Mm, to hit the fan. Um, so something to go wrong. Because that's what they their life has been thus far. It's this cycle of unending struggles. And I don't feel it's because they cause this chaos or like they're a magnet of bad luck. It's because I feel that they tend, as I mentioned before, to carry on the burdens um, and responsibilities of others. Because this pelican energy here is giving me this father vibe, um, wanting to take care and protect others, especially those that the pelican feels are in need of taking care of. Because their heart is easily moved, especially if there's someone who is in trouble or needs the help. They will always be lending that hand to others. It's like the person who takes the shirt off their back to give it to someone else. Now we do have the blue color here, which I associate with the throat chakra. And I do feel, see how it's sort of here by its gut? I feel like they tend to swallow a lot of what they want to say. And again, they're not very expressive of their opinions or of their beliefs. This might even be they tend to keep to themselves their own worries and their own pain to not cause any burden on others because they know how it feels to be burdened. They know how it feels to have a lot on their plate. So they're always suspecting that others might be going through something and they think, well, why should I give them any more to worry about? Um, I should be able to handle this on my own. I feel that that is usually their mentality. So this person might be very, very independent in the sense that, again, they don't want to bother others. They don't want to become a burden to someone else. So they tend to try to always resolve their problems by themselves. So this is not a person that easily asks for help from others, even though they easily extend that hand of help to others. And it is kind of sad because I do feel that this person is so genuinely kind, um, so genuinely good natured, but as time has gone through, they had to put up this hard shield in order to withstand all of the hurdles that life threw at them. And so I feel that they have tended to push their playfulness aside or to suppress that childlike part of themselves in order to allow this more adultish or maturish persona to come through in order to handle all of these responsibilities. But this is someone who is loyal, someone who is committed, someone who keeps their promises, someone who is always on time. They are also great multitaskers. Um, I do get the side of the pelican that they are great storytellers. Um, they have this very beautiful and active imagination. And I feel that because of this imagination, they are very good to fantasize about the worst case scenario. But remember that this is something that can be turned around. It is because of their environment and what they have gone through that, you know, they tend to think this way. But I feel like at one point, this imagination was 
used to the fullest in a sense that they were able to imagine and build worlds. So I feel like this person might have at one point really um, liked to write stories or poetry or anything that allowed them to really delve deep into their imagination because I'm getting like detailed. They're very detailed. They can imagine complete universes and worlds in their mind. If not, if it's not just writing, because we do have the blue color here, they might actually be um, really good with their voice or have such a beautiful voice or express themselves through their voice. So they might be singers or again like poets. They might actually, I don't know what it's called, but like speak poetry or just very good communicators. But again, as time has progressed and because of their life, they had to really, um, they felt the need to suppress this side of themselves and thus silence their voice. But they have such a beautiful energy and I feel like they are highly intuitive individuals as well. And they, because of their active imagination, I feel they can even be, I don't know if prophets it's the right word, but they can foretell so they can see events that haven't happened yet or they're very good at seeing multiple possibilities and very good at problem solving as well now with this image here i feel like their physicality might be um, whether they're male or female i feel they might be on the buffer side their structure might be like bigger bones um so this person might actually be very um physically active, they might like to do exercise, or just the work itself that they do allows them to maintain this physique. I'm just seeing like a wider waist and wider shoulders. Overall, this is someone that you can definitely depend on. And I feel that when you meet this person, one of the first things that's going to call to you is that you feel safe around them. They immediately offer this protection without being suffocating or patronizing. Is that the word? So if you yourself are a very independent person, I don't feel like your independence will be threatened by this person at all. Now we will move into the next cards that will give us a little insight on what this relationship will be like. But before we do that, I want to pull out some key terms just to see what the focuses are of this connection. So we have create. Okay, one fell out. We have listen. Actually, two other ones fell out here. We have communicate and we have patience. Yes, I told you patience would be key here as well as listening and communication is also key here to maintaining a relationship and strengthening it over time these two are very important but we will see so we will have so we have ten of cups number seven the bouquet and we have duality this is beautiful First of all, let us take a look into the message here in the card. Bouquet of flowers, an absolute indication of long and happy life. So yes, I am getting this energy of long-lasting or long-term relationship. Now, the Ten of Cups is a beautiful card to have because it speaks of happy families, of marriage, stability, harmony, as well as domestic bliss. Now, I usually see the, the Ten of Cups as denoting abundance in terms of emotional fulfillment. Now, the bouquet also reminds me a lot of marriage. So this can be a potential partner for marriage. I am seeing a high possibility for marriage or some form of commitment. Now, if you're currently in a relationship with someone and this energy here sounds very familiar to you, meaning you see your partner in this reading and you still are waiting for a next level of commitment, then this might actually be denoting um, that your next relationship will actually be this commitment. Um, if you're looking for marriage or just another level of commitment, then this is foretelling that this will happen. It's just to let you know that this person um, does want to be with you and grow old with you especially because we have duality here. At the beginning, I did receive a visual of two energies intertwining and then merging with one another. And as you can see here, we have two 
let's call them rings, right? Or two colors that come together, merging to create a new color. So I am seeing even a possibility to create a family with this person, having children with them. So with these two energies, I feel like you to balance each other out beautifully. Now, I do not sense that you are very much like each other. You might have different personalities and you might have differences in terms of what you like, your tastes, or even your personal creative or career goals. Yet, these differences do not pull you apart, but they bring you together. As I mentioned, this is a relationship that strengthens over time and this feels like such a beautiful relationship because I kept getting visuals of hair turning white over time. So I feel like you will grow old with this person and this is no longer about finding someone who is just like you so that everything could go easy breezy throughout this relationship, but this is finding someone that you feel safe with, someone that you genuinely like and love and who genuinely loves you and it's you committing to the relationship, wanting to work out any disputes or arguments that you have because you believe in this relationship, because you believe in each other and you want to grow old together. This is the kind of energy I am getting from this group. That's why we have the energy of communicate, of listen, of patience, and of create. With this create word here, I feel like you two coming together might even you know, start a business together or create something new and beautiful that I feel will inspire others, will inspire beauty um, and wonder. Now, for those of you who are happily married or are perfect where you are in the stage of your relationship, then I do feel this represents someone who comes in who may not be a part of your family, may not be related to you by blood, but they feel like family to you. You might partner with this individual and create something beautiful with them. Now, this could be a creative project or like I said, a business of sorts or just create this beautiful bond between you both that again will be long lasting and long term. So this is like a best friend or like your soulmate, but in terms to friendships, finding your soul friend. Okay, I'm getting a lot of stability, security. It feels very grounding, even though we have cup energy, which is water. I am getting the sense of your relationship feels like home. And it's not so much a physical place. It's your home to one another. Wherever the other one is, that's where home is. You know that you two being together, you create the home no matter where it is at. Um, now, I did get this visual of a house near the sea. And if that is something that you visualize for yourself as your perfect um, house for the future, that is one of the things that you both agree on because I feel like this person is, as I said, is a pacifist, is very peaceful, and I feel like the sea soothes them. They prefer to be a little detached from like the noisy city or the fast life. They like to th take things slow and that's why I feel like the relationship or the energy within this relationship is of a slow one. It's one that builds and strengthens and grows. So this person, I feel when you meet them, um, it might start off slow. I do feel that there will be this immediate like between you both. This person feels very sheepish and shy at the beginning, but I feel that they will open up to you very easily and quickly. And before they decide to commit to you or, you know, become any type of relationship, they will pursue you so they do feel like the very romantic type and also very traditional so they will take you out on dates they will bring you flowers um, and i think this is very important um, for some of you they will know what flowers you love the most without you needing to tell them and i feel like that will be a hint for some of you um, maybe you're not the type of person who likes roses you like a very specific type of flower um, and they will gift you that and it will be like whoa a sign for you um now with the number seven here that's a very lucky number so i feel like you both will feel like you just hit the jackpot um when it comes to meeting each other and again as i was getting with the duality card i feel like you balance each other out 
and you give each other a safe space to really show up authentically. Um, and I feel like you help this person understand that their life doesn't always have to look this way or be this way. They can enjoy peace. They can have prosperity without having this constant fear that it will be taken away from them. And as I mentioned before, I feel like this is something that will be worked on within the relationship. And that might also be a reason why this will be so slow moving because I feel this person has a lot of insecurities or a lot of beliefs that have been instilled in them by their environment that really do not allow them to fully in I wouldn't say invest in a relationship, but to fully trust themselves in the happiness that they're feeling. And I feel like they feel very, very happy with you. And if you feel like you have some similar insecurities, then I feel you both come together to work on each other on this, to help build a trust that will not be taken away. And once you realize that in one another, then you will start to believe more in this happiness. You will start feeling more optimistic. You will allow yourself to fully receive this ten of cups energy because I feel it's right from the beginning right from the get-go you both inspire a lot of happiness in each other and while this person might be very shy and reserved I feel like you might be the more extroverted one <laughs> the uh, the more bubbly one and if you feel like you're the more introverted one I feel like when you're around this person even though you are introverted, you will be the more extroverted one. Um, and I feel like maybe their introvertedness or shyness gives you um, safe space to show up a little more, to come out of your shell a little bit more because this person is not one to make fun of you or to humiliate you or to put you down or bring you down at all. I feel like they find you very cute and very amusing. And you find them as well to be very adorable. <laughs> Now, the next cards will reveal to us why this relationship came to be. And we have Seven of Stones, Healing, and the Guarded Card. So the Seven of Stones is the Seven of Pentacles in the Rider Waits Tarot. And this denotes an energy of cultivation, of growth, and perseverance. This is finally seeing your hard work paying off and your dreams or your goals manifesting now i know we have the energy of healing here and i do feel like this relationship came in to help you both on your healing journey and see how we have this circle here i see this as representing a safe space so like i mentioned before you both give each other a safe space to be to speak to share even your pain with one another without feeling any sense of burden or without feeling like you're putting this burden on the other. Because I feel like I mentioned before, this connection is centered on the heart space. You feel much compassion and love towards each other. And it never feels like you're taking from the other. Because it's always reciprocated. This energy of love, this energy of compassion. Now with this guarded card, I do feel it's denoting putting your guard down. As I was mentioning before, maybe there is some trust issues and it's again because of your journeys, because of the experiences you've gone through that have really had you feeling like you need to constantly have your defenses up. And with this person, you learn to trust more. You learn to start putting your defenses down little by little. But this isn't going just willy-nilly trusting everybody it's learning more about discernment right so i feel like you both teach each other how to put your boundaries what boundaries to place and how to respect them because as i mentioned you respect each other you honor them in that way and they honor you and in that you heal each other you heal each other's wounds um you start building trust and then that's when the relationship itself starts building up. And we do have the green woman here, which reminds me of feminine energy. Remember that we all have feminine and masculine energies within us. And I am feeling this representation of feminine and masculine here with this card. So I feel like you two are this perfect blend of them both when you come together. It's not like one of you represents more of the masculine and the other one more of the feminine. It's more like when you come together it's like your energies even though you might not consciously know how to do it it feels like your energies or your spirits know when to show up more in that masculine energy 
to meet your partner when they're showing up in their feminine energy and so on and so on. So sometimes your partner might show up more in the masculine energy and you know how to rise up to that. So between you both, there seems to be always this balance. And when there isn't, you don't run away, right? You sit down together to talk it out or to heal each other so that you can find that balance again. Okay, but now I'm going to pull out some stars just to get some letters, numbers, or astrological signs to give us a little more information about this person. So we have the letter Q, the number 5, the letter U, the number 5 again, <laughs> and the astrological sign Virgo. Virgo might be this person's sun, moon, or rising, and this is an earth sign and that was that was what I was getting a very earth energy and then we have the number five five so 55 might be a significant number for you um, or five 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 might be a number sequence you might be seeing a lot once you meet this person or before meeting this person and these might be letters of their first or last name or even their nickname Mm, I feel like this might be even the letters of this person's business name. I do feel like they have a business of sorts. Um, with the five also, I feel like May might be a significant month. So that might be either their birth month um, or five might be their birth day. Okay, but that's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance, some clarity. I hope it was a a bit of fun for you guys. If you enjoyed this reading, then please leave a like or a comment. And if you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and until the next moment, bye bye! Hola seekers who chose the rose quartz. So as I connected with the energy of this group, I did receive a few intuitive messages. The first one being, when the wind blows. And I actually received a song that comes out in the high school musical movie. The part that actually came through was It's like I knew you before we met. That one. And I also received the message I am always here with you. So according to the song and the intuitive messages we received, I feel like this is someone you will have an immediate connection with. And this is possibly someone that you will start picking up on energetically before you even meet them because I feel that as of now they are already with you energetically now because of this I do feel this is a soul connection someone that before you incarnated here on this earth you agreed to meet with them now this is the rose quartz that is often connected with the higher heart not the heart chakra this is the higher heart chakra also known as the thymus chakra this chakra often represents connections that are of a higher frequency so i'm actually seeing like your higher selves are currently connected and connecting with each other so you are already in communication but let's say in the 5D or just energetically. Um, you might even be telepathically communicating with this person, but you might not be very aware of it. So whenever you're talking to yourself or even in your head and you get responses, at times those might not be you, they might be the other person replying to you. Now, because we did have a song coming through, I feel like music will be something very important for both of you. Um, it might either be something that brings you both together or you might send me uh, messages to each other through songs. Now, I am getting a lot of like romantic vibes, but this is a very sweet energy. So this doesn't have to be a romantic partner that's coming in. This might just be a friend. So this might be a person who you will establish a very close bond with or a very um, beautiful friendship with. Mm, okay, but now we will move into the cards. Before we move further into the reading, please know that these do not have to be exclusively romantic relationships. They can be platonic as well. And for this group in specific, I'm getting the sense that this will be a romantic relationship. But if you are currently in a committed relationship and or you're not looking for any romantic relationships at this moment then I am getting the sense as I mentioned the intuitive message that this can be a friendship 
a very close bond. So take it as it resonates, okay? So these two cards will give us a little information about this person you will be connecting with. So this will give us information about their energy, their personality, as well as something that they are currently going through or have gone through that has an effect on the way that they show up when they meet you. Okay, so we have the Stingray, which I love, and then we have the King of Pentacles, number 15, the letter. Okay, now I do feel like this is a person that you haven't met yet, or the very least, you haven't met them face to face in the physical. Okay, so right off the bat with the energy of the Stingray, I feel like this is someone who keeps it on the down low. It's not necessarily that they are introverted, it's just that they don't find the need to speak about their business um, with just about everybody. This is a person who doesn't constantly post on their social media or they might not even have a lot of social media accounts. Um, they like to be more in the present moment with their loved ones. I do feel like this person is very family centered. Um, and we do have again a lot of pink, which tells me that this person is also very heart centered. They're very compassionate. I feel they're extremely empathic as well. It's not that they get easily emotional, it's just that they feel other people's emotions. So they feel for others. They're highly compassionate. They do not at all like to witness pain in any form. They might might be either advocates or they are humanitarians. Because we do have the King of Pentacles here, this might also be someone who is a philanthropist. And when they do their work, when they help others, when they donate, they do not brag about it. They're not ones to speak about these things and tell everybody about the good deeds that they have done because that's not the reason why they're doing all this. They're doing them out of the kindness of their heart and because they genuinely want to help. We do have colored yellow here, which I just got the word immature. You might see them as immature, but I'm getting this energy of playfulness. They're very connected with their inner child. And I feel that's the reason why we have this um, pink aura. I do feel like this pinkish aura around them. And that is also the reason why they are very easily able to connect with others on an emotional level and I'm feeling also on a heart level. Like they genuinely see others without judgment. I like to say that they don't differentiate. They care for life and for living beings. So I also feel like they love animals um, and they connect very well with animals. And you will see that because animals will gravitate towards this person. It's like if this person was surrounded by puppies, all of them would want to be on this person's lap. But do not be fooled by this gentle nature because I do feel like they have this angry streak to them, um, meaning they can be very, very fierce, especially when it comes to protecting their loved ones or again with protecting like the defenseless or protecting anybody who needs the protection. I feel like this person really can be the warrior type um, if they need to be. Now also do not be fooled by how they keep it on the down low because I feel like this person knows how to be in the spotlight or how to put the spotlight on them and not in a negative way. So it's like when they want to be seen, they switch this light within themselves and all of a sudden they glow, they sparkle, they illuminate. So if they want to become like the wallflower, they will. They know how to um, blend in, but they also know how to stand out. There's something very magnetic about this person. I feel like this kind of sense of duality with them, they can be very eccentric, but at the same time, very humble in their appearance and in their own being. I also get that these people are very sensual individuals. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Um, and we do have the color blue here, so I feel that they're very good communicators. They're very eloquent with their words and they know how to express their emotions and their feelings very, very well. They can even be very poetic or very philosophic in the way that they express themselves. Um, because we do have the stingray here and we know that the stingray goes to the bottom of the sea, I feel like these people tend to go into hermit mode um, because they are very deep thinkers. They might even be into philosophy 
or they just like to learn more and know more. They ask the deeper questions. But this is a side to them that they possibly don't often show because I don't think they expect a lot of people to understand this side of themselves or for this to be often the theme of the conversation. Because again, I feel like it's not necessarily that they're people pleasers, but they know how to blend in. So they're very intuitive in the sense that they know what the person wants or what the person is about. And they can switch themselves to accommodate to others. And again, I don't feel like this is people pleasing. It's just like if it needs to be done, they will do it. Um, but I don't feel like they're pretending. I don't feel like they're pretentious. It's just if they feel like it's the respectful thing to do or what is needed at the moment, they will do it. Uh, but they, they will not lose their identity or a sense of who they are. Um, but we do have the King of Pentacles here. And this talks about a very mature and grounded energy. Someone who is financially well off or successful in whatever it is that they do. Someone who is dependable, hardworking, and conservative as well. So as I mentioned, I do feel like this person is financially well off. Um, at least they are very stable in terms to wealth or in their finances. Um, they might even have a self-made business or something that they worked on and they're very, very proud of it. <laughs> and again, I don't feel like this person is much of a show off, they, but they will let you know about their successes. Like again, kind of on the down low. Now, I feel like this King of Pentacles is one that really matured through time and through various obstacles or struggles that it faced. So I feel like this person here has gone through a lot in terms to their own journey. Now, this might be in regards to their business or to their creative work. Um, they might have had a lot of ups and downs or a lot of like falls but they are someone who constantly got up and tried again and every time they got up they came back even stronger even better um, because I feel like they're ones who learn from their perceived mistakes or from their falls so they don't take opportunities like setbacks for granted they learn from it they see what the lesson in that was and that is where they get their maturity. I feel like this person, as I mentioned before, is very wise, very philosophical. Um, they have a lot of knowledge. And I feel like, again, they're very good business people. Um, they know how to talk with others. They know how to associate with others. Because we do have letter here. So again, that tells me they're very good communicators. Um, and I feel like they have a lot of connections. Um, again, it feels like connections in terms to business or some creative project now this person here has the mentality that hard work will pay off so they are extremely hard workers and i feel like because that's what their life has taught them thus far it's that they need to work hard again because i feel like there's been some struggles and that might also be the reason why they keep things on the down low because they have learned humility maybe before they were very arrogant um they flaunted their successes or they flaunted their wealth and that didn't go so well for them um, and because they have taken a lot of falls they have learned the importance and the value of humility um, because we do have the letters here I feel like this person tends to write down their feelings um, I don't feel like they go towards others um, to express their hurts their pains um, to express their problems or what's going up in their head so again I feel like they tend to go to writing so this person might actually be someone who writes songs lyrics um, poetry or just literally they write letters um, letters also remind me of someone who's very like romantic um, so maybe how you meet might be exchanging letters or long emails and with the letters I am getting this energy of like telepathic communication so if some of you do resonate with that I do feel like this person is already sending you messages telepathically and with this stingray right here I do feel like this person tends to practice some form of meditation or is into the mysticism or to the occult or the metaphysics 
I don't know why I'm just getting a lot of like um, buzzing or pressure in the third eye. So I feel like this person actively practiced telepathy or is actively searching to open their third eye or something of the sort. Okay, but now I will move into the next cards that will tell us a little bit of what this relationship will look like. But before we do that, I like to pull out some key terms just to see what will be the focus of this relationship. So we have transform, we have commitment, and we have connection. Okay, I feel like one more. One more. And we have create. Okay, so transform, commitment, connection, and create. So as I mentioned, I do feel like there is a connection already between you both. And I feel like this is an energetical or spiritual connection. Um, with transform, there will be a lot of transformation as soon as you meet this person. And honestly, I feel like you already are going through some transformation because you already connected energetically. And usually when that starts, when there is this like spiritual or energetic connection before meeting them in the physical, I do feel like it's because it's a preparation for a major transformation that is happening spiritually as well as in your external reality. So it's kind of like preparation. And with commitment, we, I am seeing stability in this relationship and create, as I mentioned, I feel like um, this person is highly creative and you might be as well. And you might inspire more of this creativity in each other when you meet. Okay, but the next cards we have the Queen of Cups, the Ring, number 23, and then we have Seasons, okay? So the Queen of Cups connects with the feminine energy, which is nurturing, loving, highly intuitive. The Queen of Cups also denotes someone who is highly psychic or empathic as well as creative. Now we do have the ring here which denotes commitment and that is the key term that we received here. So I do feel like this relationship will be a long-term relationship but I feel like it's being highly committed in each other or wanting to commit to one another right off the bat. As I mentioned before, I feel like when you meet this person, you will have this instant connection with them or an instant attraction to them. And again, it's because I feel like you are already connecting energetically. So you're already forming this bond without you having to meet physically. Now, again, we do have the Queen of Cups here. So this is only validating that this is a spiritual connection. And also with the ring, it feels like a promise. I do feel like your souls before incarnating on this earth did promise to meet each other and to connect in this lifetime. It might even be to create something or just to transform each other in some beautiful way because we do have the seasons card here. The seasons card talks about changes, transformations. It's also about rebirth. So this relationship will be very transformative. It might feel like it comes out of nowhere because I'm getting like this vortex or tornado here and it's reminding me of like Dorothy of Oz, how it sweeps her away into this other land or this other world. So it might come unexpected, but even though it feels unexpected, know that it isn't. I feel like your meeting was divinely planned and divinely orchestrated. When you meet, it's like the perfect time and you meet in the perfect place in the perfect scenario because I feel like you both planned it to be this way. Now I'm also getting the energy of manifestation so if you have been trying to manifest partner this person will feel like your manifestation or will be like your manifestation. You might even feel like you called this person in to your life. And I feel like they will feel the same way about you. Because again, I'm getting like this magnetic attraction between you both. It's like when you see each other, when your eyes meet, there's this instant recognition. And with the Queen of Cups being here, I feel like you intuitively pick up on each other. So it's not so much just about the telepathic communication, but I feel like because this connection is based on the higher heart, you actually feel each other's emotions. So without them needing to say anything, you will pick up on how they're feeling and what is bugging them. So I feel like this also reduces like conflict between you both. Now I'm not saying that you will never fight. It's just like it reduces that 
sense of tension between you both because I feel like this allows you to be very compassionate towards each other. And I'm also getting this sense of self-love. Like in this relationship, you will also experience self-love. Um, it might either be how this person treats you because I feel like they're very loving, very kind, very gentle. Um, even through their physical touch, they're very, very gentle and respectful. And it's like even if they hold your hand, it feels like this very intimate thing and it fills you with this sense of love and comfort. And so this connection will also help you open your heart chakra a bit more and be more connected with your heart space and will allow you to feel the love within and understand that you hold love within and be inspired to share that love with yourself as well. Now I'm getting a lot of beauty and sensual energy here and I did get that with this card here. So I feel like this person will help you feel very beautiful, um, very sensual as well. I'm getting that you will be more, more in tune with your feminine energy. It doesn't matter what sex um, you are or you relate to. It's more of the energy. So you will feel more essential. You will feel more attractive, beautiful through this relationship. I feel like this person motivates you a lot and pumps you up a lot, continuously telling you that you're beautiful. You are highly creative. They might even like see you as some ethereal being. And I feel like you find them very, very, very attractive as well. Now, this might even go whether you're in a romantic relationship or whether it's just a friend, right? If it's a friendship, then you do find each other very beautiful and you pump each other up, right? It's not about competition here. It's about seeing the beauty in one another and letting the other one know. And I do feel like this is a strong friendship that is meant to help you connect more with the feminine energy. So within this relationship, there will be a lot of adoration between you both. It will be very sweet in nature as well as nurturing. I'm feeling like very motherly. This person might become like a mother figure to you or I'm getting the sense of a sister like an older sister um, or you might be this to the other person. But I feel it's here to empower you in terms to your feminine energy, get you to connect more with that, um, get you to see your beauty as an individual, but also help you realize that you can pull strength from that feminine aspect that exists within all of us. Okay. Oh, and we do have a message here um, in the card says, Oops, rich and happy marriage. So for those of you who are looking for a romantic partner, then this is denoting that there will be commitment here and that this person, you might actually end up marrying them. And if you do, I feel like this will be a very happy marriage. Um, I feel like it will never be boring. There will always be constant changes within this relationship, constantly evolving. With this whirlwind here, you might even get to travel a lot with this person. Um, because again, I feel like this person wants to learn more, wants to see more, wants to discover more. And I feel like you might be very creative. And that's something that also kind of pulls your attention, like exploring um, to different places, learning about different cultures. And that's something you might have in common. Oh, in the intuitive message, we did get when the wind blows. So it gets windy during autumn season. So you might meet this person physically during the autumn season. Hmm, interesting. Or if you tend to connect with the wind or send messages through the wind, then know that this person also connects to the wind. So maybe they might send messages to you through the wind. So if you've ever done um, this practice, I've done it since I was a little kid where you ask a question and if the wind blows hard, then it might be a yes. And if there's no wind, then that's a no. Um, something of the sort, then I feel like this person also has some connection with the element of air or with the wind. So these relationships feel very nurturing, very magical. As I mentioned before, if you practice some form of mm, magic or are into the metaphysics or are in a spiritual journey, I feel like this person is as well. So there will be some understanding in that. And I feel like that's why they're more accepting of this connection because I feel like they believe in um, like spiritual connections, so they are more understanding of this. They won't run away from it um, or be scared by it. 
okay? Um, but the next card will show us the why this relationship came to be. So we have the Four of Vessels, boredom, and we have spiritual guidance. Okay, so the Four of Vessels is the Four of Cups in the Rider Waits Tarot. And this often speaks about longing, yearning for something, daydreaming and fantasizing. It also often denotes a feeling of disappointment and as this card shows here of boredom. Whew. So with this energy of change here, I feel that some of you might be feeling a little stuck in your life or specifically in your romantic life. So nothing has been going on in regards to that. Um, and it's not so much that nothing has been going on. I feel like there has been some offers, but none of them have pleased you in any way. You haven't felt a deep connection with any of them. Because as you can see, we have the waters here flowing and overflowing. But even though there's all this life, all this greenery, none of it is touching her, right? So I feel like there's no connection with any of this. Um, it doesn't inspire her. You might have been asking for a change. And we do have that energy here and I feel because of that that is what's finally coming through and I feel like it's because spirit is saying it's time this change it's time for it to happen it's time for this person to receive this relationship they've been daydreaming about that they've been fantasizing about um, it's time for them to finally receive their manifestation now I also feel like it's to help you get motivated and inspired again like if this is not only in terms of like your romantic life if you've also been feeling a little uninspired in terms to your creativity or in terms to just life in general i feel like this comes in to reignite that spark with spiritual guidance i feel like spirit really wants to get you motivated um they really want um for you to see that you are full of magic. That's what I'm getting here. I'm, I'm getting this bit of a hopeless energy. I'm not so sure whether it's hopelessness in, rom in your romantic life, but I feel like it's some sense of hopelessness within yourself or not fully believing in your own magic, in your own capabilities, not fully believing that you are deserving of this beautiful romantic relationship or this beautiful friendship. And the spirit wants to let you know that that is not true, that you deserve all this beauty, that you deserve all of this love and you deserve to experience something as beautiful as this. Um, the key term create is calling out to me and I'm seeing this feather as a quill. Um, some of you, like I was feeling, might be creators and there's something, there's a talent that you, I wouldn't say hiding, but aren't exercising. And the reason for why you're not delving into this talent of yours or polishing it is because you don't feel any sense of inspiration. Nothing is it inspires you to pick up the pen and write per se and i feel like this person coming in will be like that inspiration it's not necessarily that they are the, your muse though that may be the case it's more like this person coming in will be like a miracle to you again i'm not sure whether you've been trying to manifest a specific someone or just this person um and once they do come in it's like you believe again it's like I'm feeling like overjoyed. You start believing in magic all over again. And that gets you to tap back into your creativity or to invest more of that energy into other things. Maybe right now you've been investing it more in just daydreaming about the perfect partner or the perfect relationship and you don't allow any of the energy to go into anything else. And so the universe finally brings in the manifestation and so that you can start working on this other thing again some of you might be writers or um, again you might even write songs like this person or you might be um do art some creative thing again with the quill here and the letter if some of you might actually write letters to this person or to someone in specific um if that's the case then please note that like, your messages or your letters have been sent out to them now i know it's not going to be like physical um but like they've been receiving the message and now the reply is coming to you like now you will be receiving a reply now you will be receiving the validation that all of this energy that you've been putting out there has not been going in vain um also i feel like spirit wants to prove to you 
or more like get you to realize that the signs and synchronicities that you've been seeing are not coincidence, that all has a purpose and a reason, and that all those signs have been messages, have been spiritual guidance. Um, so they really want you to get to pay attention a little more, to get out of your headspace and see the magic that is blooming all around you. Because again, I feel like this person has been around you energetically for quite a while now, and they've been trying to let their presence be known to you. But for some reason, you've been up in your head and you've been denying everything. All that you've been seeing, you've been denying it. Um, and spirit here is like a wake-up call. So this is more about reviving your faith in magic, reviving your faith in yourself, reviving that creative spark within you. Mm -hmm. But now I'm going to pull out some stars just to get some letters, numbers, or astrological signs. And they reveal the name of this person, their birthday, or their sun, moon, or rising signs. Okay, so one flew out all the way over here. So we have the number four, the letter X. Um, the number nine, the letter U. And the astrological sign Capricorn. So this might be either sun, moon, or rising. And I got fourth house, maybe because we do have the number four here, so they might be their fourth house as well. Um, we do have the number nine and four, so these might be a birth month or birth date. Um, with X and U, this might be letters of their first or last name or of their nickname. With the X, I'm getting someone from the past, but I'm not getting it like someone from the past in this lifetime, I feel like it's someone that you've lived other lives with. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance, some clarity. I hope it was fun for you guys. Um, if it was, then please leave a like or a comment or share this video with your friends or your family. And if you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and until next moment, bye bye. Hola seekers who chose the peach agate. So as I connected with the energy of this group, I felt a lot of pressure and tingling sensations between my eyebrows at the center of my forehead and I associate this specific spot with the third eye chakra. So right off the bat, this relationship is here to bring you a lot of clarity and to help you see things more clearly. Now I did receive an intuitive message which was as you wish. So for some of you, this relationship is an actual manifestation of something that you actively prayed or wished for. Now, the energy of this group does feel a little intense in that I strongly feel this relationship is here to help you let go of or remove anything and everything that no longer resonates with your current timeline or assist with your personal growth or spiritual evolution. I also feel a sense of transmutation so if this is not necessarily letting go of something, this is transmuting energies that have blocked you or held you back in some way. I just feel like this relationship comes in with the energy of a wake-up call. Um, but we will move into the cards now. So the first cards are here to give us a little more information about this person, their energy, their personality, as well as something that they have gone through or are currently going through when you meet them. And this will give you a lot of insight on the whys of how they are showing up when you meet them, okay? So we have the Raven for them, as well as the Six of Swords, number 29, the Mouse, okay? Yes, this does feel like a very strong energy. Strong in a sense that the raven here feels like a no bullshit energy. I always associate the raven with the third eye actually. And so this is a person who sees right through BS. Um, I don't think this person at all likes small talk. Um, they like to get right down to it, meaning that they don't beat around the bush, they ask you the very personal questions from the get-go only if they are interested in you or in getting to know you. Like, you will know if you have caught this person's eye because they will actively start a conversation with you. Now, we do have the Six of Swords here, um, which talks about 
transitions, moving forward, travel, as well as guidance. This is the energy of moving on to calmer waters. It feels more like the calm after the storm. Now we do have a bird here and that for me denotes freedom. So I feel like this person very much values their independence and their freedom in the sense that they get to choose where they want to go and they don't hesitate on taking that trip or making that travel. So I feel like this is a person who loves traveling and has traveled a lot thus far. This might be a person who is actually fluent in more than one language and who appreciates someone with an open mind. Because they have traveled so much or seen a lot, they have learned to keep an open mind and to not judge so quickly or make quick assumptions. That's why this person, I don't feel they like small talk. Um, that's why they don't beat around the bush. They get right down to it. They ask the deeper questions to get to know you more or as much as they can because they know there's a story behind everyone. And I feel like this person is one who will actually wait for explanations for why you did something, for why you think a certain way because that allows them to dig deeper into your mind and to get to know your core values and your beliefs. This is a person who values sincerity and truth because they are very blunt. They are very forthcoming. Is that the word? Um, they don't really see any need to lie or be deceitful. Is this, this is the kind of energy is I'll show up and if you like what you see, then okay. And if you don't, then that's fine. So as you can see, this is a very strong energy. Um, now, we do have the color orange here, which I associate with the sacral chakra. Now, this is known as the womb chakra. It is connected with feminine energy. So this is a person who's actually very in tuned with their body, with their sensuality, with their sexuality. They don't fear any of those topics or aspects. Um, they are very open about it. And I'm almost getting this sense of this is something very sacred to them. Like I feel that life is very sacred to them. The body itself is not something that you should ever be ashamed of um, or humiliate in any way. Even though I feel like their appearance, not so much their appearance, but their demeanor might seem a little standoffish. This person is actually very, hmm, let's say they have a soft spot yet they don't see the need to show it to everyone. So this is only shown to those who they feel safe with, who they deem trustworthy. And I feel it is because in the past they have been deceived a lot. Um, there have been a lot of people who have claimed to be their friends or to have had their back. And then, you know, they did them dirty in some way. They either took advantage of them or lied to them. Um, the one thing I'm getting is that this person might be very attractive physically or might have some talent or they just have this very amazing and bright charisma to them and that often causes a lot of envy and jealousy from the people around them. So I feel that their friends or the people claim, who claim to be their friends usually were attracted to them because of this charisma but ended up feeling this envy and jealousy because they just shine so brightly. And I'll be honest, this person here knows how attractive they are. They know how bright they shine. Um, yet I do not feel any arrogance from them. They're just aware of it and they know it and they won't shy away from it. And that might have pissed a lot of people off because they have this beautiful confidence to them. And that's also what denotes a very healthy sacral chakra. It's having this beautiful and amazing confidence in self. Now, because of all of these experiences with people and relationships, I feel that this person has learned to tune their intuition um, and so they can very much detect when someone is lying, when someone is not being authentic, when someone has hidden agendas. And I feel that's why they don't have many friends. I feel they have a close knit of friends because they can detect, this is going to come off harsh, but that's what's coming through. They, they can detect a rat when they see one. Oh, that sounded harsh. 
Um, honestly, for this group, I'm not getting a lot of romantic vibes. I feel like this person comes in and they are sort of like a guide to you. I also feel like this is a person who is not afraid to delve into the darkness. Now, when I mean darkness, I don't mean something evil, something horrible. It's more like the shadow aspects. Um, it's those gritty emotions. Um, it's those things that we usually run away from or we suppress because they don't look pretty or they don't feel pretty. Um, this person has fears, but they're not afraid to see them face to face. In order to get to recognize them, so when they do surface or when they do come up, the fear isn't the one at the forefront anymore. Um, they, can, they can manage them now. Just feel like this person has seen quite a lot, experienced quite a bit, um, not only in terms to relationships, but it just feels like life in general. And it might not be so much because they've experienced this, these things themselves, but because they've seen people around them go through hardships or, again, things that are not very much spoken of in conversation. So I feel like this is a person, once you've gained their trust, that you can actually talk with about deep-seated issues and they won't look at you like you're crazy, they won't judge you, they will listen. And they feel like healing energy to me. They might be very blunt and harsh with their words, but it feels like that energy I was picking up at the beginning, a reality check because they will be very um, direct with you. They won't sugarcoat things. Um, they won't lie to you just to look good in front of you, just to keep a good face. They will tell you as it is if it means helping you out, especially if it means helping you get out of a sticky situation or to get you to see something that you are avoiding. Because again, I feel like the third eye keeps, keeps coming through for this one. So as you talk to them, they already know like what really is the issue here, what really is bothering you. Um, so they will cut through all the bullshit um, and they will get again down to it. And that might be a little harsh for some people. Um, some people might not like that. But if this person is coming in, it's because this is possibly something that you asked for. If you've asked for healing or if you asked for someone who is sincere, someone who is truthful, then here is your person. And the way that they speak is quite beautiful. Even, it might be, even if it might be short, their words have an impact. That's why I say they have the ability to like break, but at the same time help mend and to heal. So they break the illusions and they help heal the wound beneath those illusions. Yeah, it's a very strong energy. And we do have two and nine here. You add them up and it's 11. And the 11th card in the, in the tarot deck is the justice card. So as you can see, that's a very strong energy as well. It restores balance. It brings and sheds light upon the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, but now I'm going to pull out some key terms just to get a um, little more information of what this relationship will focus on. Okay. Um, so we have beginning. Yes, perfect. We have communicate. Mm -hmm. We have foundation and we have growth. Yes, I feel this person here um, came in to help you with your gro growth, to help you tear down any towers that are wonky and wobbly at this moment that do not have a strong foundation in order for you to build a stronger foundation for a new beginning because for you guys i do feel like you're about to enter a new phase or a new cycle and this cycle feel feels more refreshing it feels like expansiveness it's more clear because i feel like the cycle that you may be in might be a little foggy um might be confusing or is confusing you so this person comes in to tear through that fog um, and to pull you out of that mess so that you can start stepping into your new beginning and communication is key with this person if something is bugging you then it's preferable to let this person know because this person will let you know for sure um, so they don't like things being hidden um, 
they as, as I mentioned already they don't like any lies they don't like tiptoeing around so it's better to be forthcoming with this person and I feel that that's something that will also be built very strongly between you both is communication now the next cards are here to show us what this relationship will be like now again please know that this reading is not solely about romantic relationships they can be platonic relationships as well as work or creative partnerships and as i already mentioned i'm not getting a lot of romantic vibes here um, the dynamic in this relationship does feel a little strange but we'll look more into the cards because i am feeling that even though it's not starting off as romantic there is a potential for this relationship to develop into a romantic one but if that is something that you are not at all seeking at this moment if you are in a happy committed relationship then this can very much stay as a type of friendship or even acquaintance but we'll look more into the cards so we have the ace of pentacles number nine and then we have the dreamer in reverse okay so right off the bat i got student mentor kind of dynamic um but i'm also getting a friendship but again the dynamic here is very strange but the ace of pentacles well firstly aces always speak of new beginnings but this beginning is associated with the element of earth and earth is a very grounding energy it talks about stability and security usually is associated with the material world so with wealth or material things so this is a beginning that comes from finding stability and security as we were mentioning it's finding foundation and through this foundation then you are able to build something upon it right now i'd like to point out the number nine the number nine comes right before the ten and the number ten is about conclusions endings so the number nine is coming to that conclusion, arriving to that ending. So this relationship here comes at a moment when either things are shifting in your life or certain relationships or things that you thought were stable starts falling away. And even though that might sound scary, know that these things that are being removed from your life are things that were no longer serving you or were not going to serve you or resonate with the future that you are about to embark in yet because we do have the dreamer card here in reverse i am feeling a sense of resistance so if at this moment you start resisting the change and the falling away then i feel that's when this person comes in to help you get to see things more clearly and to help you get to see why these things need to be let go of we do have the birds here showing up and as you can see it says the birds signify dire misfortune and fierce enemies when near now all this is letting me know is that possibly during this time there might be people around you who might seem like close friends or they might seem like your dream person maybe like the perfect relationship and you're really wanting this to work but you're not really seeing them as they truly are and that is the reason why you keep holding on to these relationships or these people or this person and so this is when this raven comes in and really starts asking you the real questions and really starts tearing off the blindfold that you're wearing to get you to see the people or the relationships or the things that you're holding on to and when this happens i feel like you're either gonna really dislike it because it's going to shatter your illusions and you're going to feel like the dreamer that is falling out of the sky but it's only because you're falling out of the illusion the facades is, are being shattered and I'm going to be honest, when that happens, it's not pretty. Nobody likes it. Even though it's here for our best interest, the experience itself is not a pleasant one. But it is only through this that you can start making way for your new beginning. And I feel like if that is something that you have asked for, a new beginning, something more 
stable, something more secure, then that is why this is happening. Because the universe, your higher self, wants to bless you, give you what you deserve, what you've been asking for. But the only way to give you that is to remove anything that does not align with your truth. And I feel your truth is all about prosperity, stability, abundance, about truth, loyalty, about committed relationships. So when you meet this person, I feel like you are going to be instantly attracted to them by their physique and also by their aura, by their confidence, by the way that they carry themselves. And even when you start speaking with them, you are going to be attracted by their worldviews, by their perspectives, by how they ask their questions, because I feel like a conversation with them is none like you've ever had. It'll be completely new um, and it'll get you to delve deeper into yourself. But once they start asking more about you and getting you to actually, you know, dive deep, then you might start feeling a bit uncomfortable and then you might start disliking this person. That's why I feel like the dynamic of this relationship, it's a little bit funny um, because it's like the person who irritates you, but it's not that you dislike this person. It's just that they push your buttons in a way. So I feel like this person pushes certain buttons of yours. Um, and especially because I feel like you guys might be very big dreamers and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Don't let anybody ever tell you that there's something wrong with being a daydreamer. Um, yet because you are so daydreamy, because you shoot for the stars, you dream big, um, then this kind of energy kind of puts you down. Not because they're negative. I don't feel that. It's just they're very, um logical thinkers as well this these people here are very imaginative they're very creative they dream big as well only that they don't share their dreams with everybody yet the reason why they have accomplished the majority of their dreams is because apart from being a dreamer they are also logic thinkers they are also practical they don't just wish and pray they actually put in the work so they accept that they are living in this physical 3D and that they have to work, you know, with this reality in order to make their dreams happen. And so when you share with them your dreams, this is the type of person who will ask you, and what are you doing about it? How are you currently working on making your dream happen? And usually, because I consider myself a dreamer as well, usually us dreamers, we just dream, but we don't really plan it out, you know? We don't have the steps to how to get there. So when they start asking us this, we might get a little, you know, like, pulled back from it. And so they really get you thinking. It's no longer just a dream, but there's a possibility for it to become a reality. And that might scare some of you, because I, I am feeling this Ace of Pentacles is something that has been a long time coming like it's been in the making but we've resisted it for a while we haven't allowed this old cycle to end so that we can enter this new one and it might be because of fears of um, actually trying to make our dreams come true because we have a fear of failure or um, there's some insecurities something of the sort and this person this person doesn't believe in any of that <laughs> this person says if you have a dream then work on it, make it happen. Um, this person is not one to easily abandon a dream or a goal. I feel them to be very uh, ambitious, um, very goal-driven. But mostly just in, in terms to things that actually fuel their passion, things that they actually truly believe in because I feel that they give it their all. Whatever it may be, they invest their heart and their soul in it. Um... So this is a person who will push you. They will push you. They will get you moving. And again, it might be frustrating. And at times you might wonder why this person keeps popping up in your life. Because I feel like you might even try to disconnect from this person or cut connection. But you tend to bump into them. Um, or they call you or they text you. And you end up talking to them to them for like the longest hours because even though they push your buttons, it's not in a way to 
bel belittle you or to diminish your worth. It's actually just to get you to wake up to reality. It's just to actually get you to embrace your potential um, and embrace the beautiful future that is yours for the taking. And I also feel like this person, once they um, care for someone, it's very difficult for them to stop caring. Like their heart, their love is not wishy-washy. It's not fragile in that way at all. So I feel like this is this person sees you as someone that they care for. Like they, they learn to love you <laughs> as time goes by. And that's why they want you to see who around you is not really good for you. Like who around you um, doesn't have the best intentions. Because again, like they have this very like spot on intuition and I feel also they can read very well between the lines and I feel that that's something maybe you guys are not very good at um you get easily deceived by people or like I'm feeling like you're very pure and innocent in a way that you trust others very easily and this person doesn't <laughs> right um so that's the dynamic I'm getting here so your personalities are completely different. I feel like you are more of the bubbly type and this one's a little bit more serious, more stoic. And you might think that you're annoying to this person, but on the contrary, I think they very much like being around you. They love that you have big dreams. They love that you are highly creative, highly imaginative. They just wish that you believed more in yourself. Now see how we also have the color orange here? Yeah, I feel like this relationship is here to help boost your confidence to help center or heal or clear your sacral chakra and um, also to embrace more of your sensuality your sexuality to love your body yourself your appearance because this person here has no doubt that you are beautiful <laughs> no doubt at all it's just that possibly you don't see it in yourself so the next cards are here to give us why this relationship came to be so we have the five of bows empowerment and we have breath okay so the five of bows is the five of wands in the rider waits tarot and this often speaks about conflicts arguments oppositions um it's about egos clashing disputes this is usually when it's upright it's the energy of competition and comparison now you can see how we have this man here and whenever i see it i immediately think being on the defensive now we do have this card reverse so i'm actually seeing this person or this relationship is here to remove all of that heavy energy as I was mentioning before, if you have some insecurities, especially when it comes in terms to your appearance or your talents, and you tend to compare yourself to others, this person is here, and I'm saying it this way because that's the way that they're coming through, very assertive, is here to tell you to snap out of it because you are beautiful, um, because you are talented, because you are also magnificent. So they absolutely do not see why you would ever need to compare yourself and to compete with others. Because when it comes to you, there is no competition. Now with breath here, this is the representation of the inhale, the retention of breath, and then the exhale. So I'm seeing this as an energy of grounding as well as being in the present moment. So um, this might be for very few of you. If you have experienced bullying in the past and you have this freeze response or reaction, um, this person here, they know how to reach out to you when that happens. They know how to bring you back into your body um, because I feel like the freeze response, that's usually when our soul leaves our body, we detach because our reality becomes too much for us. And so... In order to not feel the pain, then we disassociate. So this person knows how to ground you, how to pull you back. And I feel like they know, maybe this is something that they have also gone through, like some type of anxiety, possibly, hmm, okay. I'm getting like panic attacks as well. And so this person will mm, give you some advice or help you with techniques that they've learned that have worked for them and I feel like these techniques will help you very much because even though you are very opposing in personalities I feel like there is something 
that really makes you feel safe with each other and i feel it's more of your souls or your energy there's something that's very similar in which you can both resonate um and help each other in that way so i feel like this person even though they push your buttons um they also help bring your defenses down now that might be some scary for some of you because your defenses are like your shield is what protects you um but it's not um making you vulnerable in that way it's actually to help you feel safe to help you build trust um, but especially not just trust in others but first and foremost trust in yourself now see how we have like two people upside down here <laughs> in this reading so this person really turns your world around um, and your perspective when they come into your life really you get to see people in a new light um, you get to really see their true face and finally you get to see yourself in a new light and the possibilities for your dreams coming a reality you also get to see it differently like it's no longer just a possibility it's something that can actually happen for you and i feel like this is i'm i just got the word nightmares so for those of you who have like negative thoughts or you have some worries about the future um this person helps you clear that away helps you realize that this is not part of your reality and it will never be part of your reality so you can let go of that right now even though they come off very strong i'm getting such like a secure vibe from them like an anchor pulling you back in holding you safe and sound so this relationship comes in to calm your fears um mm, is the phrase calm your insecurities accurate and just feels like reduce those insecurities realize that they're not really true at all um and it's actually to bring this energy here of empowerment to empower you in your self-worth mm -hmm. so this feels like that kind of guide that's very harsh you know that sensei that is very harsh that sometimes feel like they're not affectionate at all and it's no fun with them because they're always just like work 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 and never play that's kind of the energy that they come in um with but that is not the case i feel like they are very fun and they are very witty as well they can be very sarcastic at times but i feel like that's their wittiness coming through this is very funny because it's like those relationships that start off like as enemies well not enemies but like really disliking each other and then coming to like each other and forming a very strong bond um that's the energy i'm getting here so again i'm not getting a lot of romance vibes but i do feel like if you are looking for a partner this might actually have the potential to become a romantic relationship like but i don't feel it will happen quickly i feel like it will happen over time because this feels more like a friend um that bond that others might not very much understand because again you're such opposing people like or elements i was gonna say um but for some reason you stick to each other you're always together people always find you together even though you're probably bickering or arguing um but you guys get along in your own little way being in your own little bubble actually the other two groups were super beautiful but this is my favorite group because the energy here is so different so refreshing and so authentic um and i'm also getting like you will help um soften this person because i feel like sometimes their ego gets a little in the way um i don't feel it's so much because they flaunt their beauty or their resources it's more about mm, like i said they don't let others easily into their life and they might be a bit cold towards others and so you help soften them a bit in terms to them that doesn't mean that they stop listening to their intuition it's just that they open up a little more to the world yeah and with birds we have so much birds here so when you meet this person you might either start seeing birds a lot or um you might start dreaming of birds or because like i'm getting the energy of a spirit guide like a mentor so this person's higher self might actually be your spirit guide um and they come through as a bird so it might be a raven 
or any other bird that you're seeing. And then if you have prayed for or wished for aid, for help, for guidance, then that's why I feel like this person is actually manifesting in your um, physical reality. It's coming through in human form to assist you personally. That's why it feels very different, difficult to shake this person off because at the core, I feel you genuinely love this person because their love for you is unconditional. And you, you can sense that even through all the bickering here and the differences. Um, you might actually also get to travel with this person. Um, they might invite you or convince you to travel with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now I'm going to pull out some stars to get a little more information about this person. Now because we do have the raven here, this person um, might have dark hair. Um, or might be dark in complexion or might have dark brown eyes. I feel like there's something that really stands out in terms to them um, because it's of such a dark tone. Um, but yeah, so we have Libra, number eight, number nine. We have number five and then we have the letter Q. Ooh, I just got this. This person might have very large or very um, prominent pupils. That might be something that catches people off guard. Um, I don't know, I just got that. Um, but we have Libra, so this might be their sun, moon, or rising. Um, we do have eight, nine, and five, so this might be their birth month or birthday. Or they, these might be numbers that are significant to you. But we do have the number nine repeated here twice. So if you're seeing this number sequence 99 or 999, or you're seeing the number nine a lot, then that might be a sign that this person is around. Or again, if you do resonate with them being your spirit guide, that um, they are with you energetically. And then we do have the letter Q that might be a letter of their first or last name or of their nickname. Or I'm even getting, um, is there a country that starts with the letter Q? I just looked it up and there's one country and I'll place it here because I know I'm not going to pronounce it right. So this person might actually be from there and I do feel because we do got traveling a lot, um, this is actually someone who lives um, or was born and raised in a different country than where you were born and raised. Um, yeah. So that is all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance and clarity. If you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. And just to give you a sneak peek into my next video, I will be doing an energy checkup through a pick a card reading format. And I will also be giving some Reiki healing. So again, if you're interested, then please do subscribe so you can get an instant notification when the video is finally up. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me and until next moment, bye bye!